Good evening. I am Selwyn Collins, your host of CWS Conversations with Selwyn. Thank you for joining us. Our guest for the evening is Mr. Nigel Hughes, who is coming in from Guyana. And my mom said to me at the end of my exams in the second form, and I was nowhere near the worst in the class, um, it's kind of mid class, you know, I really don't believe that you um, are doing as well as you're capable of doing. And I'm going to ask that you re ask the headmaster to um, have you repeat uh, the second year. Now, that to me was like social death. Is that uh, why you repeated? Yeah, what's that? Is that why you repeated? I didn't. Re I yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That oh, was really I didn't know. I didn't know that's what happened. Yeah, 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 yeah. She said, I, I don't think you're doing <laughs> anywhere what you're capable of. And I, I swear to God, someone, that changed my trajectory. After that, it was a totally different thing. I was in one, two, three in the class. I I was, you know, one, two at the, at the CXC in uh, in Saints. When I went over the bishops of six form, I taught bishops. I would have been in a totally different zone. Wow. So a human being. Um, did she not make that one single decision that I thought was the end of my life? I really did think, oh my God, how could I possibly do this? Da, da, da. Um, and I mean, I can go to several decisions that she made. I can go to several. Um, I mean, my father was just phenomenal in, in, in being focused as to what he wanted for his children. He lived for his children. Um, and nothing was more important to him than, than, than giving them um, the best education that he could. Mm -hmm. and, and God rest his soul. I, I really couldn't really ask for, for, for much better than I got. Hmm. Um, I, I, I want to go into the chat room, Nigel. Um, Nicholas McDavid, Obama has made one of the greatest moves in foreign policy and is something that will positively endure as a part of his legacy. Nicholas McDavid is a matter of record to those who know and were involved that Guyana played a great role in Cuba's history and vice versa. The region will benefit from greater cooperation, but the region's, region is going to have to step up their game massively with their tourism product. Long live Cuba. Long live the people of Cuba, Viva, really said it is a Guyanese. Long live the people of Cuba, Viva, really said it is a Guyanese thing. We don't like the nastiness, but we understand. Nicholas said, we pray for your continued health and strength so you can lead the charge of the doers. And you may go down in the annals of Guyana's political history as a game changer. Really said, seriously, Nigel, seize the opportunity now. Your father will be proud. Nicholas said, hope, hope can be a very dangerous sell. So we, just always, we must always be careful, but hope is necessary for us all. It is at the core of our fabric. Guyana is one of the most mis misogynistic places in the region. Women in Guyana need to be liberated. It is ridiculous really said on the discussion of women is Kathy interested in presidential authority would you support or encourage her to seek the office let's stop there Nigel you want to take this question <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I just want to say good night to Nicholas in Jamaica <laughs> Nicholas has the privilege of living in in a country that I think has the greatest spirit of the Caribbean I mean you know the Jamaican national spirit despite all the other challenges they have, I, I have to, you know, you really do have to say salute them and you have to say respect you. Very um, that spirit that every citizen in Jamaica, irrespective of their their race, irrespective of their class, their culture, every every citizen that I know that I've met from Jamaica, um, them live Jamaica. I mean, you know, it's 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 phenomenal. So, but to answer the, the question, the several issues that have been posed um, by him, I... If, if I know Kathy's not interested in in, 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 in um, 
in, in being president again at all. She basically just wants to be able to con contribute to, to to making a change to to what's happening here. And and that was something she had since she was head girl in St. Rosa's. Um, but if the occasion ever arose uh, and she was interested, absolutely, I'd be 100% behind her. Um, I, I, I'd certainly try to warn her about the level of abuse that she's going to have to face. But be that as it may, if if that arose, sure, it's absolutely, I'd, I'd, I'd be there. Um, really asked, said, oh, yes, we miss sidewalk terribly, terribly, terribly miss that social arena. And really, let me just say this. I had an impromptu conversation with Nigel last Friday. You know, we were setting up the Skype, and I said, you know what, Nigel, let's just tape this. And he, he spoke at length about Sidewalk Cafe. I, what I did is took excerpts from that interview, and I posted them at different times. I haven't put that piece yet, but I'm going to put that piece and so you will hear the, you'll hear him talk about Sidewalk Cafe, how it was formed, and why he why he insisted in having it why he insisted in having Sidewalk Cafe for for as long as he did. Not to be outdone by the internet, old boy. Exactly, my brother. And uh, you know, we, we were two determined souls when we were we were kids, Nigel. We were your children, so this is not gonna stop us. Nicholas McDavid said, we live in honor of those of our parents that have passed, and we vigorously salute those who are still alike. Nigel, question. The way our past sometimes condemns and judges us often clears the political theater of, of, of I would say many would be, would be great leaders in any country. Do you have any regrets about anything the political pundits have, have used or may try to use against you? Um, you're asking me if I have regrets about anything I did. Um, I suppose the things that you did that you would probably do differently. Right. Uh, and, and, and I am not an exception uh, to that. Um, but in terms of, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I the things I did in the past I didn't do for for political reasons. So I, I'm not sure that I, I would revisit them. I certainly I would temper. My hope that Ghana can actually be different. I, I certainly, if I had to advise myself again, I, I certainly would um, revisit um, the level of hope that, that I thought existed in my ability to contribute to uh, making a change in Ghana. I, I think Ghana is. Um, I hate to say this because it's not. It's, it's not. It's not a hopeful statement to make. But I. I think Ghana has a relationship with Sisyphus. Um, that really is um, is unparalleled. Let me put it in the Caribbean. I mean, every time you think you're getting somewhere in Ghana, uh, something always occurs, and you 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 happen to 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 go back further than where you started. Um, I, I I mean, I, I'm sure there are always statements that I, that I have made that I I probably would have would, would have made differently. Mm -hmm. um, sure, I, I I mean, I'm, yeah, but I, I I don't I don't know. Um, you don't have to, to, to name any. I'm, I'm just asking you because... In, yeah, there are always things that... I mean, there, there are things that you would probably have framed differently and, and, and right. expressed differently, but that, that, that happens in, in everybody's life. What can you say to the, to, to the men in Guyana, but especially young Guyanese men about violence in Guyana, but especially young Guyanese men about violence against women and young girls? I think that conversation has to start with violence, period. Um... Uh, I, I mean, violence against women suggests that somehow violence against men is acceptable. I, I addressed this issue um, in a couple of meetings that I had in um, in, in in the African community um, because of that's a community with which I'm a lot more familiar. And the whole issue of of violence in the young African male community is a is a major problem. Now, a lot of that has to do with the way in which I think young men perceive themselves and um, the perhaps misguided notions they have, quote-unquote, of what you call respect. I mean, if, if you were to go into the Georgetown prison and look at um, young people who are facing uh, the charges of murder or manslaughter or charges involving homicide, 
um, a lot of them are just, just. I mean, they're, it, it's just so tragic, the reason why people are there. I mean, somebody disrespect you, you pull out a knife, stab them, and then you're spending the rest of your life sitting down in a jail. And, and um, a lot of that has to do with our socialization early, early in life. Um, it's got worse now because, particularly in, in, in uh, African communities, what has happened is that, you know, the maternal grandmother or the paternal grandmother who was always there, um, you know, the community used to be a lot more cohesive, so you couldn't, you couldn't behave as badly as you wanted in the community without some elder, you know, pulling you up. Um, single parent homes, uh, men are just absent from the lives of, of, of their women, particularly in the African community. Um, I'm sure there are lots of explanations for it, but all of that contributes to an environment in which um, violence becomes um, ever present. Mm. Um, violence against women, of course, is appalling, but the whole concept of resolving disputes by violence and interpersonal disputes by, 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 by violence has to be addressed, and, and it's a phenomenal challenge um, that has to be faced in those communities. And one of those um, issues that we have we have to start off with is we have to be honest with ourselves in terms of how, how we're going to approach this. Um, in, in the wider Guyanese society, it's just absolutely awful um, the number of women that have been slain, brutally slain, or just slain generally by men. Um, we have a crisis... Um, we, we have a major crisis going on in, 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 the, in, the, in the male community in Guyana. I, and I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that we are miseducated about what it is um, to be a man. Um, we, 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 have, uh, uh, tr we have adopted traditional misguided, misogynic uh, um, impressions of what a, a man should be. This results in the violence and absolutely nobody is attempting to deal with it. And then when you add on top of that, that women are outperforming, out-educating, um, uh, no longer need to rely on men for their existence. Uh, and that is not a social uh, requirement anymore. Men, uh, literally, and um, until we start to re-educate, or at the minimum stop the miseducation of our young men, we're gonna we, we're gonna continue to see this phenomenon because we we're doing band aid work. We're talking about the domestic violence. We got to go to the root cause of, of root cause of it, and, mm -hmm. and we're not beginning to deal with that.